Welcome to Prescott Hill Climb for rounds 29 and 30 of the Nicholson McLaren British Hill Climb Championship. Prescott is a superb hill in Gloucestershire run by the Bugatti Owners Club and in the background here we have a superb example of a Bugatti Type 37A and later in the day we're going to take a trip up the hill with Stephen Gentry. Stephen, could you tell us a little bit about the history of this car? Yeah, this is an original Type 37A um, built in 1929 it was bought for a very famous Bugatti engineer, salesman, Jack Lemon Burton, for his 21st birthday present from his father. He raced the car at Brooklands, um, Shelsley Walsh, in the sort of uh, very early 30s. Um, he campaigned the car very well. Um, he subsequently sold the car to a fellow racing driver who proceeded to race the car at Brooklands. The car uh, had a major engine blow up and that's when the Type 43 engine which is in the car was fitted then so it, that was fitted in the very early 30s. So this is an eight cylinder blown engine, the yes. original engine would have been a four cylinder? That's correct, it would have been a four cylinder supercharged engine, um, now it's fitted with uh, an eight cylinder 2.3 litre supercharged engine um, which is exactly the same configuration as a Type 35B mm -hmm. but originally the chassis and its identity is a Type 37A. And what sort of period would that engine conversion have taken place? That was done in the very early 30s, about 1932-34 period, by a famous uh, Bugatti mechanic called Giron. The car proceeded to campaign racing um, and held the Prescott record for many a year with uh, lots of famous lady racing drivers. And now the new owner, Mr Neil Perkins, owns the car and now it's been built up to full race specification and he plans to campaign the car still. So the owner himself, Neil, he does a lot of race circuit racing in the car uh -huh. um, and I do a lot, most of the hill climbs in the car. Okay. So it's a very famous car. So fantastic uh, speed event provenance from the very early days yeah. uh, and yeah. straight into British hill climbing at that. Yeah, it's always been a racing car. Um, it's a very, very famous um, Prescott car, mm -hmm. um, Shelsley Walsh car. Um, and Brighton Speed Trials, it's, it's, it's done them all and it's done them for most of its life until it went to America about five or six years ago. Um, but now it's back in the country and back here at Prescott. And I understand your business, um, Gentry Restorations, are the company that uh, rebuilt the car? That's correct, yeah. Um, me and my father run a company called Gentry Restorations Limited. We set up business in the year 2000. We started restoring this car October last year. Mm -hmm. um, prepared it over the winter months to get it ready for this season. So this season's been a bit of a shakedown for us, um, and so next year we'll be, you know, here a lot more serious. Um, we sort of had a lot of little problems, and now sort of next year, you know, we'll be out here really pushing for the for the crown. Okay, well, great to see the car back in the UK and in active service as well, because uh, I understand it did more concourse events in That's the correct. States. Yeah, That's correct. Yeah, it's very chromed up in a, when it came back. She was looking a bit sad. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, great to see it in the shape that it is. Thank and you. Uh, I'm sure our cameraman's really looking forward to a trip up the hill later on. We will give him a very good run up the hill. We won't be scare him too much. Oh, I was going to say, be <laughs> gentle, be yeah, gentle. We will. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stephen. Okay, no problem. Best of luck. Thank you. Now, let's catch up with Jerry and find out what's happened over the last few weeks in the Hill Climb Championship. Thanks Tony. By Shelsey Walsh in mid-August, Championship leader Scott Moran was all but home and dry after Martin Groves failed to score at Craig Atnett because of a gearbox problem. But the defending champion's challenge was not over yet. Let's set the scene at Shelsey as we watch Chris Merrick attack the famous Worcestershire Hill in his Gould Judd V8. Still in fourth place on the British Championship table, Merrick is fighting to keep in touch with Roger Moran, but the 1997 champion, whose son Scott is heading for his own first British title, has the edge today. Here's Scott Moran now. There are still 10 rounds to go, and with 13 British runoff wins in the bag already this year and a whole string of second place finishes, he only needs to keep up his momentum near the head of the field to secure that first British title. Graham White Jr's V10 Predator is still undergoing late season development but the former double champion will fly when he returns to full time competition in 2009. Trevor Willis is flying too and although his agile OMS Powertech is a little down on power for Shelsley, he hangs on to third place overall in the championship. Walker here, you know Murray's story with Shelsley, broadcast from here a long time ago but uh, been here today signing his book, he had a good day? I had a wonderful day, John. I, yeah, I, I did my first ever broadcast from here in 1948. 
And the place hasn't changed at all. It's still the same friendly, wonderful spirit here. Marvelous motorcars, great competitors, and it's been wonderful to come back. Thank you for having me. So under the watchful gaze of Murray Walker, Martin Groves comes to the line. Nothing less than a series of record-breaking wins will keep him in the championship hunt now, and although his chances of doing that are slim indeed, the current Hill record holder knows that of all places, Shelsley is as good a place as any to start. A brilliant launch and growth rockets into Kennel. Full power up to Crossing Bend and the Ghoul's inside front wheel brushes the bank at over 130 miles an hour as he pours on even more power. Hard on the brakes for the S's and with a razor sharp turn in, the Ghoul darts between the high banks. Now Groves feeds 640 plus horsepower onto the road as he heads for the line. 22.58, it's yet another new Shelsley record. Martin knows that despite that tremendous result, he's going to have to maintain that sort of pace to the end of the season to stand a chance of overhauling Scott Moran for the title. It's a tall order, but he's helped on his way by a bottle of champagne from Murray Walker, plus the Nicholson McLaren Round Winners Trophy, and of course, the check for FTD. The following weekend's event at Gerston Down proved to be a decisive one in the 2008 season. Groves' driving partner, Paul Ranson, had had a good day at Chelsea with third FTD behind Groves and Moran for the second time this year, but was denied his first ever victory by just three hundredths of a second as Moran took the win. But he's got the Gould out of shape and onto the grass and the exit of Carousel. He's recovered it well but into Ashes and the car spins through 180 degrees. That moment at Ashes punctured a rear tyre so Paul had no hope of getting round Ashes at speed. With a replacement wheel and tyre in place, the car is returned to the paddock in time for Groves to take his all-important run. So once again, Groves needs a win. In a stroke of cruel luck at Shelsley, he caught a sudden rain shower on the very last run of the day and 8th place was not what he needed. Scott Moran is down the order at Gerston with an intermittent misfire and it's his father Roger that leads the way, so Groves knows that this will be one of his last chances to capitalise. At over 130 miles an hour through hollow, this is a quick run. He clocks the split a tenth down on the leader, so it's all down to the final part of the hill. Up into ashes, he locks the inside front wheel on the apex, but it's a good exit, he's early on the power, and this is where that tells us the ball rockets over Burke's rise and over the finish line. 27-4-1 pulls back another win. Now let's take another look at that season-long two-litre duel between Tom New and Paul Haynes. New's desperately trying to break clear of a tie with Chris Gill for second in class, but he's got the pill beam sideways on the grass and the car snaps back to the opposite verge. Tom sorts it out, but the time is blown and he'll have to settle for fourth place. Looking to consolidate his place in the British Championship top ten, Paul Haynes steps up the pace in the afternoon. Under pressure from Will Mason, he rises to the occasion and takes the Delara to a narrow class win before once again making his mark on the championship scoreboard. Fourth in the opening runoff, local hero Basil Pitt is hoping for an even better result on the hill where he so nearly scored his first ever win back in May, but this is a bit of a scrappy run through Carousel and he almost loses the gold on the exit. Seventh place will have to do for this afternoon. As ever, Chris Merrick is chasing Roger Moran, who leads him by 15 points on a championship table. But the smoking Judd EV is showing signs of a hard work season. Undaunted, Merrick pushes on hard, and it's a great result for the jovial ex copper with third place. This could be the most important run of Scott Moran's hill climb career. With Groves a non starter after another gearbox breakage, eighth place will secure his first British title. Out of Ashes and the Ghoul blasts over Burke's rise and into second place for Scott's most significant run of all. Fastest on the day though was this man. After his most promising season yet in the Big Pill Bean Judd, Joss Goodyear survived a trip into the Ashes barrier during the opening runoff to take a memorable second ever British Championship win. So towards the end of a great year in which he so far scored 14 wins and 11 second places with three new hill records, Scott Moran takes his first British Championship title at Gerston and rolls down the hill to the well-deserved applause of spectators and marshals. The 32-year-old from Rudlow withstood immense pressure from defending champion Martin Groves for two years before finally beating the three-times champion. 
Scott's come a long way since that first win at Harewood in 2003, but throughout he's enjoyed the support of his wife Debbie, his mother Helen, and of course his father Roger, the 1997 champion. Incidentally, Scott has now levelled with his dad on 37 round wins apiece, and there are still six rounds to run. The championship table shows that Martin Groves can no longer overhaul Scott Moran on points, but Trevor Willis is snapping at his heels and could yet overhaul the three times champion. Roger Moran looks set to stay clear of Chris Merrick in fourth place and with the win today, Joss Goodyear looks good for his first top six finish. Join us after the break when we move to Gloucestershire and Prescott Hill Climb. 